everybody. This is Solv- Solvable Mysteries podcast, episode number one. This is our first podcast ever. My name is Juras Shimkus. I'm here joined by Glenn Heiko. Say hi, Glenn. Hi. Great to be on the show. Yeah. Uh, and so basically today we are talking about the Hinterkaifeck murders. So Hinterkaifeck was a small farmstead situated between the Bavarian town of Ingolstadt uh, and Schobenhausen, approximately 70 kilometers north of Munich, and uh, this uh, farmstead has became famous uh, because of the gruesome and puzzling crimes, crime that happened there, the murder of the family living there. So uh, the six victims were the parents Andreas Grober, who was 63 years of age, and his wife Kazilia, who was 72, their widowed daughter Victoria Gabriel, who was 35, and her two children, uh, Kazilia, who was 7, Joseph, who was 2, and the newly moved in maid Maria Baumgartner, who was 44. So yeah, what do you think about the, 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 the case, Glenn? Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. I, I know you, both you and I have done uh, a bunch of research on this, and, and I, yeah. I know I, I've, seen the, I've seen the case show up in a couple of different, like, Unsolved Mysteries kind of uh, YouTube. So certainly it was always something pretty pretty interesting. So, yeah, it was back in the 20s, uh, yep. and they used, they used something, a, a, the weapon was called a mattock, which yeah. I had to look up. It's, a, it's kind of a an old word in English, which it's, it's basically a pickaxe or yeah, something yeah, pretty close to it. Yeah. yeah. So a, a garden implement. Um, it's interesting too, because it's, uh, so like, uh, there's a, a manual for um, investigators in the United States that the FBI uses, yeah. uh, that was, that was done by the same guy who's in the Manhunter series. Uh, and this is classified as a spree killing instead of a serial killing. So a spree killing is when you have a bunch of murders that happen yeah. in a, a relatively short period of time. Uh, instead of like an extended uh, period, but yeah, it, it's pretty bizarre. Um, yeah, definitely just, very bizarre. Yeah, it's interesting because it, when you when you dig into it and start to try to look at the motives, and, and that's what we're gonna discuss today is, is just going through this weird cast of characters, and 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 the the family itself was already pretty bizarre, but yeah, I mean, I mean, when you when you look into it, it's kind of hard to figure out what the motive is because at the end of the day, um, no money was taken. Yeah, uh, the person the person that did it stuck around. It sounds like for a couple of days. Yeah, um, that, that was that was a crazy detail for me as well. That you know, how can you kill the whole family and then just live uh, on the farm and <laughs> mind your own business for the next like three to four yeah. days? Yeah, that that just seems insane. That seems like a like a, a psychopath would do that, or somebody who's not in their their right mind. And 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 plus they, I mean, they they killed these people with the with with the a garden implement including a yeah. little, little toddler a little little two-year-old who i guess the two-year-old was killed last yeah um, i, I believe was, yeah he was killed bad. last yeah in while he, in his sleep yeah but like so yeah the case is definitely bizarre and it's actually a really famous case in germany i believe it's like the most famous murder case in german crime history just in general so yeah i'm definitely looking forward to discussing uh this topic more in depth so just to recap the events of what happened in this case uh and i guess maybe this will help explain why this case is so interesting to so many people yeah. um so what you had is you had, you had a, an extended family um you had a, a basically a grandfather and grandmother or uh, andreas and kazilla um they had a daughter who was living with them victoria um who um just as a side note uh, there were a lot of rumors in the village that uh, the daughter and father had an incestuous relationship. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. That that may well feed into this. Um, and 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 Victoria was, in theory, widowed. Her husband was believed to have died during the war, and yeah. his body it, during the was... during the First World War, he was believed to be, have been killed in the trenches. Yeah. And then finally, there was a a brand new maid. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, Maria Baumgartner, yeah. uh, who just started, and and it is worth noting that um, the maid before her had quit, and I definitely have some interesting thoughts about her as well uh, in this case because she had a, a big 
part in terms of some of the testimony. So what happened was uh, you had this family living uh, in this, this farmhouse that had a, 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 apparently a stable and a, and a barn um, adjacent to it. Yeah. And uh, if I recall correctly, um, there were a lot of weird things going on. They thought they heard footsteps in like the, the I guess the attic or the roof. Yeah. But then, but you know, they did, they they actually did the uh, they did the search uh, of the farmstead and they really didn't find anyone there really. But also, I think the the creepy part was that they found uh, footsteps coming uh, from outside of the forests, as you can see here on the map. There, the the Hinterkaifeck farmstead was situated around basically around forests everywhere. So. Uh, they noticed that there were footsteps coming from the forest to the farmstead, but they didn't see any foot up, footsteps going back uh, to the forest. So, you know, somebody was probably sneaking into the farmstead on a regular basis, maybe, and spying on the family, or just a few days prior to the murder was staying there. You know, there, there, there are a lot of like really interesting details to this case. Yeah, there was. Uh, yeah, the, that, I forgot all about that. The footsteps. And the, I think that was in the snow, and the, yeah, it was yeah, very eerie. Yep, it was like, yep. like <laughs> leading up to the house, but yeah. not going away. So it's like, yeah. okay. Also, that, uh, also the newspaper from Munich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A newspaper that was from out of town. Yeah. Um, that was just sort of randomly left there, um, and then you had kind of uh, different reports from different people of like strange folks. Yeah, um, there was like a man, a man with a mustache. Nobody recognized. There oh were, yeah, yeah. Looking at the family, spying on the family. Like yeah, like yeah. What, what was that all about? You know, maybe it yeah. was, uh, maybe it was, uh, you know, the Carl Gabriel, the deceased, allegedly deceased uh, uh, husband of Casilia. I will bring up his picture really quickly. You know, he does seem like he has a mustache. You know. Oh yeah. So. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, maybe I didn't even think of that. Yeah, that, that it could, could potentially be him. Yeah. Um, so so what what happened on the chronology of this uh, is that uh, this this maid started this new maid started on on March the thirty first, um, and yeah. on it says here in Wikipedia at least that a few hours later all of them were believed to be dead. Yes. So it, what, what, it's, a, it's a heck of a first day of work. Um, <laughs> it's definitely, uh, yeah, like, you know, it's, it's, it's a crazy first day at work, to say the least. Yeah. Yeah, and I read somewhere outside of Wikipedia that uh, this new maid, Maria Baumgartner, she was actually uh, not... Uh, she was not well. I, th I think she was slightly disabled. I, I didn't really look into, like, what way she was disabled. But I believe she had, like, I don't want to speak on this situation in the wrong way, but I think she had some sort of mental problems or some, something oh, of that, something of that matter, yeah. Some kind of mental disability, but but something that that apparently um, wasn't enough to to get in the way of her duties of, of doing, I guess, apparently physical work or household. Yeah, household. I, I believe I've I've read somewhere that she she needed the money or or something like that also she was escorted to the farmstead on her first day of work by her sister so i think her sister almost maybe pressured her into taking this job or something uh, like that yeah maybe just just money's tight around the house and, and every everyone's effort counts yeah um so so uh, it looks like the kind of the rough chronology is uh <clears throat> These are kind of a, oh, 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 well, so, so the other weird thing before I even get into that is um, for all the weirdness that was going on around this farm and you know weird footsteps and footprints and yeah. weird people around and <clears throat> for whatever reason Andreas the the, the patriarch of that family yeah. didn't seem to want to get the police involved and that that I think is, is worth sticking a pin in uh, and addressing in a little bit because it, it, it may yeah. tie into some of the some of the motives for for why someone did that but yeah for whatever reason this guy who <laughs> had some kind of reason to believe that somebody was <laughs> potentially in his house or, or on his property. Yeah. Um, just did not want the, the authorities involved at all. And that, that I think is a little bit of a red flag, uh, in, in terms of like, like maybe something was going to happen. Um, but for yeah, whatever reason, definitely, uh, definitely. yeah, that, that the house, the household, um, 
you know, the household was well known in the area. And then what happened was you had a couple different people that for whatever reason, uh, in one case, there was a worker on the property who had to do, do some kind of job for them. And there were some other people who were like neighbors or townsfolk mm-hmm. and, and they're like, gosh, we haven't seen that family in a couple of days. Um, yeah. It's been really quiet over there other than, than somebody has been cooking food and, and cleaning up a little bit around there, feeding the horses, et cetera. Uh, and yeah. then, and then they, they come in the crime scene and they find, um, four of the, the family. So they found Andreas, his wife, uh, his daughter, and, uh, one of the grandchildren, Kazilla, yeah. the oldest, Kazilla, sorry, the, the seven year old, yeah. uh, murdered in the barn. So they were, they'd been yeah. slaughtered. Yep. There we, there we go. Um, and then uh, the other two people were uh, in the house. Maria yeah, and Maria and the young Joseph, who was two years old at that time. Yeah, toddler. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to make oh my sure. Gosh. Yeah. What, so, what a picture that is! Wow. Yeah, yeah this picture is not that of uh, the murders in the house. Yeah, I believe this is the picture uh, where the young Joseph was murdered. Uh, I believe he was murdered while while he was sleeping. And yeah, you can just see like how eerie these pictures really are you know they are definitely disturbing and uh just you know sets like the tone for the whole case you know like uh, uh southern germany just after the first world war recovering and you know the the situation in, in the country was grim uh just by itself after losing the war you know after all the reparations that they, they had to pay Right. And you know, then these murders happen. It's definitely, definitely an an, an eerie case, I would say. So one one of the things that kind of piqued my interest was um, when they were doing investigations after the fact, because obviously this was a, a a pretty major thing for the, for such such a small town. It would it would be a major thing now, even in a, in, a, in a big city. Yeah. Um. So uh, one of the things they tested was they were like, "Gosh, what what made." The theory was the killer lured each person to the barn for the, yeah. for the four people that died there. But then when they did a test, they're like, wow, you can't really hear anybody screaming in there when you're in the house. Um, so, so if somebody was screaming in the, in the barn or the stable, et cetera, you couldn't hear it from within the house. So they were like, how did this person even lure yeah. each person yeah. to the to, Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely interesting. Like, how, how could you even... Uh, lure them you know uh, that's that's like i think one of the the biggest inconsistencies in this case that you know i think it's like the widely suggested uh, explanation that he lured them one by one but really how could he even do that you know if if if, if for say you kill somebody in the farm uh, and on the other side in the building nobody can hear it why would they actually come out to check on what actually happened in there, you know. Right, right. So, so then I get the, the the next question when they were investigating, of course, was like, well, who did it? Uh, and they had a an interesting cast of characters uh, to go through. It, it, it it's funny, well, not funny, but it's, it's no, worth noting that yeah. I think if on if Andreas hadn't been killed, you would almost think this was like one of those murder, one of those people murdering their whole families after they lost it finally. Um, Except yeah. you know, he, he probably he probably didn't didn't kill himself though with the pickaxe. Yeah, so. and how and I, <laughs> I believe he was uh, I believe he was dragged from uh, outside. I, I believe he was killed outside of the barn, and then he was dragged into the barn uh, by somebody. So he couldn't have dragged himself to the barn after he killed himself. You know <laughs> that that just wouldn't make right. any sense. That, that's interesting too. It, it's I, I feel like if this was ha- happened today, they would have paid more attention to those drag marks or trying to find. I mean, maybe they did. Maybe they just the clues were gone because it had been so long with the snow melting or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, it's interesting. They can they, they can see the drag marks and and you would think it would it would take somebody, uh, you know, dragging a, a full size man is pretty hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. So, and and multiple people just in general. So you know, I would be, yeah. I would probably be leaning towards like a you know healthy sturdy man who probably did this did these murders you know because that does take a lot of like physical strength to do these uh, things sounds like sounds like somebody with also like knowledge of of how to 
how to uh, operate on a farm at least or, or you know farm work yeah. I guess is yeah, the definitely, way to put it. definitely because after you know the murders the farm was pretty much kept in check for a few days you know yeah yeah and and, and then just attesting to strength um, it, it, uh, I remember watching a show uh, a long time ago one of those like dirty jobs shows yeah, yeah, yeah. where they where they, they they went to go see a, a pig farmer and um, this was like a, a, a high school kid who, who worked on his own family's farm during the mornings and then he'd go to school and then he'd do football practice and then he'd come home and he had more work to do. And um, I think probably as, as like in kind of the modern economy, most of us don't farm anymore. We don't realize how much yeah. physical work that is. It's, oh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely. A, it's a full-time workout, right? Farmers are probably some of the strongest people on earth. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's like a, a really hard hard thing to do so and you probably need to have knowledge about how to do these things but you know uh, this this was like the 20s uh, in like rural germany so you know probably like people living in those uh, areas they probably knew how to keep a farm in check so it really could have been like anyone uh, who did it you know maybe even the neighbors you know everyone was like a a, a real suspect during this case uh, so here's here's one little detail that kind of I think it might be the detail that disturbed me the most was that um, when they kind of did their their little investigation and I guess the autopsies they said that the youngest daughter the one who was killed in the the seven year old who was killed in the barn yeah that they think she was alive for a few hours afterwards oh yeah yeah she'd been tearing out her own hair which that that's crazy yes yeah yeah i don't i don't really fully it sounds like a, like almost like, like a blair witch <laughs> it's it's thing. yeah it's, that's, it's just a strange that's, thing yeah it's definitely wild like you know maybe the 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 killer did left her alive on purpose you know maybe maybe that's what happened maybe he was you know a really really evil person or something like that yeah i, I, I mean I'm, I'm pretty sure he was evil <laughs> i'm pretty yeah. sure he was evil <laughs> Yeah, for for sure. Yeah, or, or disturbed or, or or something. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a little weird that uh, I don't know why the girl would be tearing out her own hair. I've never really heard of somebody in pain. Uh, maybe it that. was like maybe. shock or something, you know, and, and maybe She's just totally out of it. Yeah, yeah like like a, having a seizure, maybe. Yeah, I couldn't believe what was actually happening, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you get a you get a, any kind. I'm assuming you, you hit them in the head and, and any kind of you know, head trauma can make you seize up. Maybe that was, that was part of it. Yeah. Uh, if, we're, if we're thinking of this, this list of suspects, um, so you, you have compiled uh, a, a list from, from our, our sources of yeah. folks that yeah. did it. Um, so it, I think that's probably a pretty comprehensive list you have. Uh, so the first one yeah. you, you put is uh, Carl, as you mentioned, was the, yep. the husband yep. mustache. Yep. Um, so uh, yeah, says so, says so he uh, he disappeared. They never really doesn't sound like they ever really had recovered his body for whatever reason. Yeah, That's probably not, yeah. not 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 totally surprising given how the First World War went. No, uh, it's, it's probably like a lot of people died, so you know recovering every single body is difficult, and probably a lot of bodies were like so you know badly injured uh, yeah. that you couldn't even like make out who the person actually was. Yeah, they weren't. Nothing was even left. So, so yeah. one thought was that this guy comes. You know, maybe he, he didn't die. Uh, he comes back. He stalks the family. He's upset for any any number of reasons. Um, yeah, like the incestual relationship by yeah. Kazilia, uh, or uh, with her, like, or I mean, not Kazilia with. What was the name of the, or or was her name Kazilia? Uh, it was. Uh, let's see. Because I or was it Victoria? No. Victoria. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Victoria. Yeah, Victoria. My bad. My Victoria bad. With her father. Uh, yeah, with her father. Yeah. Uh, Andres. Yeah. That that could be one of the reasons. Yeah, especially because you figure. I mean, he was sixty-three when this happened, and she was in her thirties, and they were doing that, carrying on like that. Then, that makes me think that he was probably victimizing yeah. her. You know, way oh, yeah. earlier. Than that, I, I so think. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think he was like a, a nice person, you know, like, or at least like that's that's like the information given to us that uh, like most of the sources that I have researched, you know, describe Andres as a, uh, you know, not like a, a really nice person. So he, he, 
he he may have been like uh, setting like a really dark tone to the whole family life, you know. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's why he didn't want the cops involved. Is that you just you know it's like it's like when you have yeah. like an abusive an abusive head of the household here now, they don't really like their family to have any chance to tell the authorities of what kind of yeah, god awful things definitely. are going on in the house. And you yeah. know incest is uh, illegal, especially back in like the oh, yeah. the twenties. So you know I I don't think he was like a a big fan of the law enforcement back in the day. You know. Right, and then and then for, for sort of the other side of that, um, you know, like like if people knew, which it sounds like people were at least had some kind of inkling that something was going on. Yeah. Um, I could imagine that that would be offensive. It's offensive to anyone in period, but it could be very offensive to somebody that was maybe super religious. Oh, definitely, um, definitely, yeah. Where, where maybe it would be so offensive that they would see it as an abomination and much like how sometimes you see people motivated by religion or, or ideology to do pretty extreme things now. Yeah. I, I wonder, I wonder if, you know what I mean? Somebody who's like a little bit disturbed in their thinking and they think they're doing like God's work and they're like, you know what, this, this, I'm going to, God doesn't want this, doesn't want this to happen. I'm going to, I'm going to kill the offender, which is yeah. obvious, and, and, and maybe also Victoria. The person could also blame the victim a little bit here, and then and then say, you know what? These other people that are products of this or yeah. that were playing along with it, they all need to be either punished or sent to heaven, you know, to not suffer anymore in this world. Uh, I could see that kind of disturbed thinking yeah. being why somebody, yeah. Yeah, yeah, who was in the know, went to do it. So, so like on, on one hand, that, that could be the 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 husband, the, the the supposedly dead husband, he could come back and you know maybe his his wife told him. Yeah, but kinda, yeah, but like, it it definitely could be the case. But I personally, you know, it, this this theory that that this man who apparently died like a few years back, you know, he actually didn't die, and then after like what I I, I can't I don't really uh, know the details. What it was like six or seven years. Uh, prior to the murders that he allegedly died and then he comes yeah. back and, and then murders like everyone you know for me this this theory is like like far-fetched you know but I yeah. believe I believe since you have like the uh, you you are reading the doc files that we have compiled on this case I believe there's uh, a, a story mentioned about a German speaking Soviet officer who had claimed that he was the the murderer uh, of of Heinter Kaifek? So I think there's something. Uh, do you see any information on that? Yeah, yeah, I, re- I remember that from the yeah from some of the, the background research. Yes. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like one of those kind of kind of like rumors floating out there, and and they're not able to exactly point. Yeah, like like you said, it, it's it seems like the a little bit far-fetched compared yeah, to some yeah. of the other ones yeah that we, we looked at so, so that's worth moving on to the next ones are um yeah let me see uh so we have carl now we have um here was the one who was actually this is actually uh, one one of the my, my my two favorites for potentially who did it so this this person lawrence i'm gonna say hopefully i guess this lawrence schlittenbauer yeah um who they they said was also believed to have had a relationship with Victoria um, and um, he came under suspicion pretty early because yeah. uh, he did a bunch of weird stuff, right? Yeah, uh, if you don't mind let's take a short little break and I will bring yeah. up some uh, information on Lorenz and maybe I will find a picture as well, okay? Perfect. And we're live, we're back, Glenn. So looking at Lorenz um, yeah, he was one of my, my favorite uh, suspects in terms of you know yeah. someone who potentially had 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 <laughs> had a lot of a lot of arrows pointing at him yeah uh, because of the way he acted so he already he already had a, had an intimate relationship with with uh, Victoria supposedly yeah um, and and yeah the locals knew knew all about him and I guess he was one of the the first groups of people that were there when they were discovering the bodies and 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 it sounds like he's just all over this crime scene and, and almost almost too much. Yeah. Too familiar with the crime scene, right? Yeah, and the whole thing when you know he allegedly unlocked the the uh, the farm with a key. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that <And> was 
<laughs> and a key, part. yeah, and and the key was actually missing from the farmstead. Like uh, Andre right. had, had reported a key missing, but you know the, he was like their neighbor, so he could just have the key, you yeah. know, a, as a as a neighbor, you know. But but it's still it's it's weird, you know. It happened like so long ago that you know these details, you know, they they they, they really don't add up. Like, how did he have the key? Also, the thing was that right. Right when when they discovered the bodies, uh, he was touching them, I believe, and like really just disturbing the crime scene. Scene, you know, so that was a bit odd to me as well. Yeah, yeah, it almost it almost reminded me of the the John Benet case here, um, which was where a a, a, a very small child yeah. uh, went missing in the house, and then they they finally the the dad <laughs> after that. Oh, after the cops had searched the house, the dad found the, supposedly found the body in, in the in the the cellar, and, and he moved the body. And, and right away, it's like, okay, so one of the, one of the main suspects, or someone that was a potential suspect, moves the evidence all around and and yeah. you know, contaminates the crime scene. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, definitely, it's, definitely, that was definitely very very suspicious, you know. And also, given the fact about the the romantic relationship he had with Victoria, you know, but at the same time. Like I'm, I'm finding hard like to find like actual motives for him to kill the the, the whole family, you know? Yeah, I mean that's 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 where it, it's it seems like such a weird thing. If so, let's say let's let's put it together a situation here where uh, maybe he's jealous mm-hmm. over you know he wants he wants to have a relationship with Victoria. He's jealous about her relationship with her father. Which um, which I personally I don't believe that Victoria enjoyed you know that that relationship yeah. so it, it's strange like why would he actually kill you know everybody and not just andres you know right that, unless that's interesting unless maybe he had been rejected so he felt like he just oh uh, yeah you know, once yeah, yeah once, once once again bet- between that and, and maybe if he had any kind of like you know um strong opinions about what was going on in that household it, it, it did kind of make me think that like Either that situation or something similar with someone else might have been why Andreas didn't want to go to the cops because it was it was like a lot of dirty laundry. Where like for him to go to the cops and say and give them the real story and once again the, the picture you're showing, yeah. <laughs> the guy also has a mustache, so yep. it's it's interesting. But 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 the, uh, a lot of people was, had mustaches yeah. back then, you know. So so it really yeah, yeah. It, it actually would tell a lot more if if they described somebody stalking the family without the mustache, you know, because. Back in the day, everybody was where having them, you know. So, yeah. yeah. For all we know, maybe even maybe even Victoria had a mustache. Yeah, knows, definitely. But, yeah, yeah it's a, so so like I I mean I I here's here's one other thing that I thought was interesting was that uh, uh, apparently a lot of other people thought that he had done it after the fact, so he'd actually um, been involved in several lawsuits to supposedly cl- clear his name. You yeah, know, yeah, and, for years. Them, like, yeah, yeah, for years afterwards yeah for for slander slash defamation yeah um basically so that so it's interesting that sort of the court of public opinion back then was leaning towards him being a very strong suspect because of all those weird things in in, in his defense playing devil's advocate i would say um you know uh finding your your all of your neighbors slaughtered next door uh he may have been in a pretty severe state of shock yeah um yeah and, and kind of you know maybe maybe that's that that could kind of excuse or explain some yeah, of this. Yeah, and things. and also I think we should we should also mention the fact that you know the youngest boy in the family, Joseph. Well, allegedly he was not you know uh, a a pro- product of uh, uh, Victoria and Andres' incestual relationship. You know, uh, Joseph could have been the son of. Lorenz, you know, because uh, he also had some sort of a romantic relationship with Victoria, so maybe he was just disturbing the crime scene because he was actually searching for, you know, his his uh, alleged son, uh, and I think that that's that is like the th- th- that's his reasoning for disturbing the crime scene after the fact, you know. Wow, that's excellent. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, it's true, right? That like like who knows if one of those bodies could have been on top of. Joseph's body, so he's checking for that just to make sure there's not like a, a, a tiny toddler 
trapped yeah, underneath. Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah definitely. And, yeah. And then, the, and then the toddler was literally like like the last one to be found because he was deep in the house inside his cradle or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so that was that was uh, one of the main suspects. The other ones, um, that I, yeah. I, I have in my notes. I have these as my my second favorite were these guys, the brothers, Gump, who apparently had done a bunch of, they'd done at least one other murder of uh, several peasants in, in one place. So so they'd done other spree killings, at least that they were accused of. Yeah, um, yeah, d- that's definitely a, another like interesting situation, but. You know, it's it's really. I I personally did not find like a lot of information about uh, them for say, so I really don't know much about you know them, what they did. Yeah, there wasn't there wasn't a lot of a lot of information about them. It it did kind of answer that question, like, did anything like this ever happen nearby? But it, 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 so on one hand, yeah, but or or at least in the the same general area, but but then, like historically. Um, I guess it wasn't that uncommon, especially yeah. before be, be, before before countries had the sort of national and local police forces um, in the past few hundred years. It was not uncommon for kind of home invasion robberies to go very badly like this, um, and just just not leave any witnesses. Yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. That. Yeah. So that that makes sense here. Um, <clears throat> then there was a. So I'm just going through uh, the other one that kind of prompted my attention so there's a the brothers thaler uh, which we'll, we'll get into in a second um we had you had some other suspect uh, suspects let me rewind it for a second so yeah we mentioned there was there was there was a, a, a new maid who, who apparently didn't survive her first day of work or get her paycheck yeah. um and uh before her there was a former maid who worked there it looks like about a year uh, just short of a year her name was krizenz rieger yeah um and she seemed to be kind of. She seems pretty weird. She had, she had some weird stuff going on with her, and she seemed to point the fig, finger at a couple of different people too mm-hmm. when she was interviewed. Yeah. So, what I what I have here is she had suspected uh, a couple sets of people. So, like the Anton and Carl Beekler, um, because these were guys who had worked on the farm as I guess uh, itinerary um, labor. Yeah. Uh, helping yeah. Yeah, and I believe one of them like mentioned something about like killing the whole family and taking their like valuables <laughs> or something. Taking like their that. money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That seems like a like a like a pretty pretty big motive. Um and and this was weird because this happened two different times with her. Yeah. So apparently this maid had this strange habit of of people coming up to her window at night to yeah, talk to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what was <laughs> that all about? I I have no idea what how to explain that, yeah. I mean, it was like it was like she was taking food orders or something. She had like a like a drive-through window for her, her, her bedroom window. And yeah, in not... the middle of nowhere, like this farmstead yeah. is situated. Even now, like we are looking at a modern-day Google Maps image, and even now, like we can see that you know there's not that much going on around. Here, yeah, yeah, it's just wood. So where are all these? brothers you know coming from you know that maybe, maybe this was like the 1920s version of tinder or something in, maybe, in their area maybe. um yeah so it was weird yeah and they you know they said like like the the dog dogs were used to these guys um and yeah that that, that she she said she said that they had suggested um there's money and that the family ought to be dead. Maybe, maybe, uh, the family ought to be dead thing is interesting because I'm like, okay, is the family ought to be dead because they have money and you can steal it? Or is the family ought to be dead, the, the guy saying that, because... Yeah, because he's because crazy, just, yeah. Well, yeah, he's crazy and, 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 and like maybe he knows about kind of the, the disturbing stuff that's going oh, on. Oh, yeah, maybe was, maybe he was there religious and, you know, so yeah. something like that. But but the interesting part, like, after the killings, no money was taken from the family, right? right? So so this is, like, really interesting. If you're plotting to kill the family just straight for, like, the profit of doing it, like, why would you not take the money? And why would you stay for multiple days after the murder taking care of the farm animals and, you know, making yourself right at home? Shouldn't you just take the money and just leave and then, you know, maybe go run away, far away, you know, maybe to Munich or something like that. Why would you stay at the farm? So the whole, like, uh, narrative that this was done, like, strictly for, like, the money, 
you know, I don't believe it, you know. And also, yeah. wh why would you have to kill the whole family to take the money, you know? You could just kill maybe, you know, whoever is in, in your way, you know. Maybe you try to steal the money, but you don't, like, go in and kill everybody in the family, you know. Yeah, it seems so strange. It, it, it Either somebody's plan completely fell apart, or, I mean, it, I guess with that to me, like like you said, that not not taking the money and then sticking around for a good seventy two hours um, when he could that person could have been discovered and, and in fact one of the one of the uh, one of the other suspects or workmen that came on the property claimed that um, while he was working during the day at one point the dogs were all locked up inside and, and one of the doors was closed and then at some point when he was on another part of the property and came back I think the door was like open and one of the dogs was out. On a chain. Yeah, and and this was, was like uh, the next day after the murders, I believe, or. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it would overlap with that. I think I can't remember if maybe even the chimney was smoking, so like someone had a fire going, and. Yeah. It was, it was it was very strange. It made me, so to me that that sounds like someone that would do something like that. I mean, it sounds like psychopathic uh, behavior mm -hmm. because psychopaths um, or psychopaths and sociopaths have. Uh, kind of a lower, um, uh, how, to, how to put this? They have, they have a lower uh, fear response. Yeah, Does that yeah, make sense? yeah, yeah. They, you know, yeah, definitely. They, 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 they just seem to like act on like their like you know feelings. Uh, they, they don't really care about the consequences or anything like that. You know, they are, yeah. or, or I should say, they don't fear the consequences. You know, and yeah, maybe. You know, like, the fact that this person, like, murdered the whole family or persons, you know, we still don't know it was if it was, like, one person or, or multiple people who did this. But uh, the fact that uh, the, the person or the person stayed on the farm and, you know, continued to live on this farm, you know, makes me think, like, this this is definitely something, like, like a, a, a mental issue situation, you know. At least that's what I'm getting from this story. Yeah, yeah, it, it would it seems like it would point that that direction that the person was either like you were saying, just either so unafraid or or, or potentially you know d disturbed enough and, and out of it enough, like 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 a, you know some people with schizophrenia often live in a in a state of um, kind of only only semi awareness of, of what what reality is because you know reality. To them is something else. Um, so often, like like the rest of us are not actually real to them. Yeah. So yeah, it just, yeah. just just seems like they were they were carrying on as if nothing had happened. The, the other thought of thing I, I I wondered though is could that also be a sign that it was somebody very familiar with the property and the comings and goings, and they were just that that confident that nobody was going to come knocking at the door or ask for anybody that they were like oh, I have plenty of time. You know, no one's going to come for a week. Yeah. Um, but. But, but that but, but, but that didn't yeah. actually happen because people were like right. <laughs> coming almost every day, you know, and you know the uh, the little uh, the young Kazilia, she was absent and didn't, uh, at school, you know, and the school wasn't notified by anyone, you know, that Kazilia would not attend uh, classes. So, you know, I don't think it was like that type of a situation because you know people were coming in all the time, like the newsman. Uh, I mean the uh, the person who delivers uh, the mailman who delivers the newspapers he came by like after two days you know and you know like you you would expect that uh, to happen you you would not expect no one nobody to just uh, ju just to ju just to leave the the farmstead alone you know right you, you would expect some, some people to like show up so so just like nonchalantly just live on the farm and make herself like dinners and feed the feed the fa feed the like farm animals. It's it's definitely wild. It's it's crazy. That that almost seems like I mean yeah you make you make an excellent point because it it seems like it, that would take a really disturbed person to do that period. But then like like it, it almost seems to rule out someone that knew them. I mean I I don't know. It's it's hard to decipher what a, what a crazy person would do. But um, you would. Often when I hear stories that are kind of similar to this in real life where they, they catch somebody who's like, you know, yeah. broken into a house and killed the family and then kind of stuck around for a while mm -hmm. or, or come, come back and forth, 
it seems like that would be more likely to be someone that didn't know the people whose bodies they had to be around um, for an extended period of time. Yeah. Though I guess, yeah, it's weird because I mean they, they would have had to be go by the bodies at some point. Like if they were feeding the horses, or they have to go into the barn and be around that. And then even though the um, the the maid and the the toddler were dead, I guess they're out there, you know, they're dead in another yeah. bedroom. So you yeah. kind of isolate yourself, but you know, you would think they would try to put as much distance between themselves and what yeah. they did as yeah, possible. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So yeah, so this this case is definitely mind-boggling because, like, as you said, like you know nothing really makes sense in this case like who could have done it and you know one thing's certain that i feel like this was like a crime of passion not not like a a a crime of like uh any sort of like uh personal gain because uh, you know no money was taken from the farmstead and and you know like the way that everybody was killed with a pickaxe you know I, i think somebody like it, it it i believe like it it it's either somebody who who really hated the family or maybe like was uh, religious in a sense and just didn't like like the the incestual relationship between victoria and andres or it was uh, you know somebody who was actually mentally disturbed and he just you know passing by scoping out the the farmstead for a few days prior to the murders and you know just just murdering them and living on the farm for a few days and moving out and you know maybe it was somebody who, who who's not even on the suspect list you know because right now looking at, at the suspects uh, the main two suspects basically are described as uh, Carl uh, Gabriel who's like the father uh, I mean the the husband of Victoria which is to me just sounds really unlikely that he actually did the killings you know it, to, to me personally it just you know I, I just don't think that could have happened and then Lorenz you know Lorenz is like a credible uh, suspect but also you know besides him I don't really see anybody anyone else who would do it because uh, the other brother uh, the brothers that wanted to kill the family you know why didn't they take the money so it, it's right. it, it's it's like it's really hard to say like who did the the killings you know I, I personally this is why this case is so fascinating to me personally because like there's just no way to tell who did it you know and and there's so many different theories you know yeah it, I, I agree with you the way you, you sum that up is yeah it, it, it seems it would the crime of passion sounds like a perfect Either, either passion or the complete opposite. So either yeah. somebody like 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 Lorenz who just loses it and, and it's just I can't I can't you know you, this this lady rejected me and her family's doing these awful things and I just I don't you know I just want to erase erase the situation. But it, it just seems weird that he would want to be one of the first people on the scene once it all started going getting going. So I mean the only reason why I could think why he would do that yeah and be and be one of the discoverers if he also was the the, the person that did it. Yeah, to, to like have an, an alibi like or, or not an alibi yeah. to like to like contaminate the scene, you know, to hide See. his own like uh, you know like uh, his own like fingerprints or, or any anything like that, you know. And, yeah. and, and then he could, could just like say that he did it like on the day of the discovery, you know, and and not during the actual killings. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe even potentially he was paranoid that if he didn't go to the scene, it would be like almost abnormal too, right? So yeah, like, so like yeah. if, if 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 there was a big commotion next door to me at my neighbors, even though I don't know them that well, um, you know, if the cops showed up and and there was a lot of stuff going on, I I, I for sure would go outside and, and even even down the street and maybe check out and see what's going on, talk to the neighbors and stuff. So maybe it was one of those things where he's like, well, if I just hole up in my house. Hmm. They're gonna start. They're gonna start pointing the fingers at me right away. So why don't I go there and, and play, play surprised and and do it? But yeah, it seems it's pretty pretty weird at this point. If I were to kind of like pick, you know, yeah. two two of them, I, I I would go the same direction you went. That like, yeah, it's either crime of passion and and it's somebody involved with the you know, Victoria and 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 maybe and maybe there there are in some of those cases maybe there was 
This maybe this is why and- Andreas didn't want to get involved because maybe Andreas was involved in some kind of feud or love triangle with one of these um, gentlemen in the in the yeah, town. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, or or like you said, just really bad luck. It's like uh, like it would be like the the equivalent of. Um, I can't remember the name of the, the villain in uh, No Country for Old Men. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. I've, I've seen that, you remember? Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that, the guy with that the, guy. The, the haircut, yeah. <laughs> the bull haircut. And the, yes, yes, the, yeah. The, the, the slaughterhouse that. government. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean, case in point, he's sort of like a, almost a force of nature. He's like a, a when when he comes into your life, a disaster happens. Mm. And, and, and you, had, you had no idea that he was coming. And... Um, after he comes and, and enters your life, there's a good chance that your life might end or be totally different. And, you yeah. know, that, that, that happens all the time too. Just like you said, some really disturbed individual and the fact that the money wasn't taken just seems to be like a huge arrow. pointing Yeah. To, yeah to like the, the fact that the money wasn't taken, I think it's like a, a, a big, a big, uh, clue to the case, you know, because if for say the money was taken immediately and no one, no one would uh, like stay on the farm pri- uh, after the murders for like a couple of days. You know, you would think that this was just your regular, you know, uh, home invasion, and you know, str- strictly for profit. But you know, this was this was something else. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think uh, so. Then, if if we were gonna like end it around there, um, the only yeah. other thing I could think of is, is doing like maybe it's some kind of wrap up. Yeah, so you're as I, I really appreciate um, a you, you having me on as your co-host and and b bringing up this case. This is something that I think in America mm-hmm. um, we're not as familiar with, given some of the other high-profile cases. But for the rest of the world, and I think especially in in, in Europe where you are, um, this has been one of those long-term yeah, mysteries. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's been it's been good to, to hash over it. So we're we're you know both both you and I are very eager to hear back from our, our viewers and listeners on what you all think out there happened in this case. Uh, certainly it seems like every year there's a new set of videos and articles on this. And um, as Juris has uncovered, uh, there's even like new evidence that comes up from time to time. I think you mentioned that there was something that was suppressed earlier mm. from a, another investigation. Yeah, I believe it was like, um, uh, uh, do you mean like suppressed as in like, uh, uh, the like fact hidden. that, yeah, like, uh, uh, I don't know if anything was hidden, but like I've heard that in 2007, uh, like, uh, German police academy students, I believe in Munich, but I could be wrong. They actually uncovered like, uh, uh, who did the murders, but they decided not to release this information because, you know, they just wanted to be respectful to the family members of these people and just just in general because, like, so much time has passed and I think it, they thought it was common courtesy to just, you know, not release this information. However, I could not imagine how could they possibly uh, uncover who did the killings, you know. I don't think they, they, they actually... 100% uncovered who did the killings because it's just as you said the case the case is so bizarre I, I just don't see how 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 can how, how could you even possibly solve this you know even though we are called like the Sol- solvable mysteries podcast I, I think this one you know is actually quite a bit unsolvable yeah yeah we're definitely going to need a time machine uh, yeah. to definitely stick a pin in this one but yeah. Uh, still, it was it was definitely a lot of fun. Uh, I love discussing this. So, so yeah, me we have too. me too. Yeah, we have a lot of good topics that we're teeing up uh, for yep, yep. future podcasts and shows. Uh, until then, thank you for joining us, and we look forward to yeah. seeing you in the next episode. Yeah, thank you for joining us, guys. And yeah, uh, as Glenn mentioned, definitely uh, let us know. Like, what do you think actually happened? in the farmstead uh, back in the 20s because we're definitely interesting to hearing your opinions and we're definitely going to continue on doing uh, more episodes and continuing the show so yeah i guess i'll i guess we'll catch you on the next episode right glenn yep thank you so much thank you so much and we're signing off have a good one guys bye